today we will discuss about terminal velocity and see what is the formula that comes out in case of a body moving through a plate now terminal velocity the basic meaning of terminal velocity is that when the velocity terminates that time the velocity is called terminal velocity terminate means when you allow body to move suppose uh, i allow i drop a spherical sphere under gravity so it moves down as it moves down and down its speed will gradually increase if it is possible that with the increase in speed the there will be some force acting in the upward direction against gravity then if that upward force balances the gravitational force downward then in that case net force on the body is zero when net force on the body is zero whatever velocity the body would have acquired by that time by that time means before the net force is zero whatever velocity is now if with that velocity at that instant the net force becomes zero so the body will continue to move with that velocity because there is no net force the net force is zero whatever velocity the body has acquired it will move with that velocity that constant velocity that that is the termination of velocity the velocity terminates from that point that means there is nothing going to change in the velocity vector the magnitude of the velocity vector and its direction both will remain same because there is no net force when net force is not there then you cannot change anything in the velocity of the body and the body will continue to move with a constant velocity that constant velocity is called terminal velocity so <clears throat> i'll write the statement first the definition of terminal velocity okay then we'll proceed definition it is that constant velocity it is that constant velocity the body attains when falling through a medium falling through a medium that is the definition so as soon as you release the body it will not attain terminal velocity it will take some time to attain the terminal velocity because as soon as you release it the velocity is zero gradually the velocity will increase and afterwards the terminal velocity will come so let us understand and try to find the derivation of terminal velocity this terminal velocity i represent as v t v sub t so this terminal velocity we are going to derive so derivation of terminal velocity derivation part we will imagine that uh, the sphere the small spherical object sphere of uh, mass m and uh, and radius r is uh, moving through a fluid moving through say water there as time passes the speed of the sphere will keep on increasing as it falls more and more distance through gravity so therefore to attain terminal velocity we'll assume that the medium is the medium in which the object is moving is very very long the distance we the distance it is moving is a very very long that means the medium doesn't finish very quickly it is not that the object soon hits the bottom of the medium we assume that the medium is very large very long medium in top of, in terms of its uh, distance vertical distance so that the body will get sufficient time to attain terminal velocity 
So the catheter is a very narrow, long tube containing the liquid and SPR is released and see what will happen. So first, let us draw the diagram. So here the medium is there. We release the ball here. Spherical ball, are shown in blue color. This is a sphere whose uh, are the radius of the sphere. M is the mass of the sphere. with the density of the sphere and the density of the liquid is a sigma we we'll consider a small g as the acceleration due to gravity now i release the object here released so when you say that it is released its velocity should be zero the initial velocity is zero and afterwards it will start moving down following this path as the body moves down the speed will increase in this direction the velocity will keep on increasing downward let us assume that when the body is at a point say here It attains terminal velocity here whatever velocity it has I call that velocity as terminal velocity how to find the expression for this terminal velocity that we'll discuss next okay so today we'll move we'll discuss this in the next phase how to find this terminal velocity so we have to draw this diagram again and discuss when the object is released from here its velocity will be zero its mass is m density is rho its density is sigma so its density is rho its density is sigma now so when this is fully immersed and released okay fully immersed and released so that time we will draw the free body diagram ABD, we are drawing the ability free body diagram when fully immersed and released this condition this is the first thing when you release it what are the forces acting on this body in this situation fully immersed and released u is zero u is zero one force is acting downward that is its weight mg and uh, the buoyancy force will act uh, in the upper direction buoyancy force that is uh, f b say force due to buoyancy i will calculate that this is the force due to gravity or weight or mg so this time only two forces are there as you can see and uh, this force is always greater than this force so it will start moving down following this path but as soon as it starts moving it will have velocity so at any intermediate point it might have certain velocity say v so when there is a velocity there will be viscous force so one, another force will act on this object when while moving through the fluid 
this uh, viscous force as we have discussed that it uh, depends on the velocity of the object as the velocity keeps increasing from this point towards the final point where it attains the terminal velocity from this point to this point if i draw the velocity vector diagram it will be zero here afterwards it will little more then little more then little more so here something afterwards this will maintain the same velocity now she is not going to change this i call this vt so by the time uh, the body starts falling its velocity speed keeps increasing and with the increase in speed the viscous force increases because we know that the viscous force is uh, 6 pi eta rv according to stokes law this is the viscous force i call it a fv viscous force this is buoyancy force buoyant force or force due to buoyancy this is the weight of the object so this comes into picture when there is a velocity when the body starts moving when there is velocity if this velocity is zero then viscous force is also zero so therefore in the initial case when the body was released there was no velocity therefore there was no viscous force so only two forces are there now as the body moves down this is not going to change because uh, mg has nothing to do with the motion or rest of the object it will remain the same similarly if the object is completely immersed at the start then also it remains completely immersed throughout from this point to this point so this force is also independent of the motion of the object so two forces will remain same from here the time you release it and the time when it attains the terminal velocity so therefore this viscous force is the only force which will be increasing increasing as the object falls down and this force will be proportional to velocity and opposite in direction of the velocity so it will act in the upper direction because the body is moving in this direction so frictional force or viscous force will act in the opposite direction so this is the velocity vector diagram i will just draw the viscous force diagram nearby here it is zero here it will be gradually increasing 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 and increasing so this is the viscous force that will act at the time of attaining terminal velocity so this is one fbd i will draw another fbd when this viscous uh, terminal velocity is attended when terminal velocity is achieved so suppose this is the point where terminal velocity is achieved then that time also we have to draw the three body diagram let us do that so there are three forces uh, as usual uh, these two forces will be there which is uh, independent of uh, the motion of the object it will remain the same from the start to this point but one force uh, will act in the upward direction that is known as your viscous force this is the viscous force extra force that will act on this object so what happened is uh, as, uh, one more important thing is that this force and this force these two forces uh, will not change as the body moves and as the body is going down that means to start with suppose that this is 10 newton this is uh, suppose 3 newton so obviously there is a net force of 7 newton downward because of that the body starts moving down and it will remain the same but then if there is no viscosity it will remain the same but because of the viscous force which is increasing in magnitude which depends on the velocity as the velocity increases this because viscous force also increases and the time comes when the difference the net force becomes zero because initially it was 10 suppose it's 3 now if this becomes viscous force becomes 7 then 3 is because of this and 7 because of this so 3 plus 7 is 10 now it is also 10 10 will cancel 10 and therefore net force is 0 this viscous force will gradually increase and the sum of these two forces will balance mg that time the velocity whatever velocity the object would have at the time that velocity is known as terminal velocity when this situation occurs when these two forces in the upper direction and one force in the downward direction will balance each other the velocity whatever velocity the object would have attended that time is known as terminal velocity
So, for terminal velocity, what will write? So, for Vt, terminal velocity, students, then we will, to get this terminal velocity, we will just equate these two upward and downward forces, okay. So, mg. What is fb? This fb is force, viscous force, which is uh, 6 pi eta rv plus this bind force. The bind force or up thrust, the up thrust is the weight of the displaced liquid. What is the weight of displaced liquid? It is uh, the equal volume of the solid which is that much volume of water if this is water then that much volume of uh, water will be displaced and uh, the weight of that uh, volume of water is the uh, up thrust or vice force so now <clears throat> as we know that uh, density is mass upon volume so the mass of the displaced uh, liquid suppose i take that the mass of the displaced liquid is uh, m dash and uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity then this is the weight of the displaced liquid and that is the up thrust that is the fine force mass of the object now because uh, mass is density into volume, I will prefer to write the uh, mass in terms of uh, density into volume. So this is the mass of the liquid which is displaced and this is the mass of the object which is immersed. So this mass m dash will be density of the liquid and the volume of the solid. Okay, Because the whole volume of the solid is immersed, in case of full immersion, the volume of the liquid which is displaced is equal to the volume of the solid which is inside it. So therefore, I will continue to write this way, plus there is no change in this expression. Density of the liquid, I have taken this and for solid the density is this. So therefore, it should be sigma do volume of the solid into G this is this is rho density of the solid volume of the solid into h okay now this is uh, taken to this term is taken to the right hand side and we'll rewrite and see what will happen obviously v and g will be taken out taken as common this will be sigma rho minus sigma will be there this comes to this side then the expression will become like this 6 pi eta v this side it was rho vg minus sigma vg so therefore vg is common and this is this this v is what is the volume we must not con get confused with the, these two v's this v stands for volume and this v stands for terminal velocity okay so now the volume of uh, the object which is a sphere of radius r so the volume is 4 upon 3 pi r cube okay 4 upon 3 pi r cube so i substitute here and rewrite the equation 6 pi eta v Now we will cancel, which is to be cancelled. One R goes here, and this cancels and gives you R square. One pi goes here, uh, 
2 to the power 2, 3 to the power 6. This is the terminal velocity, I will write as Vt. This Vt I will keep as subject. I will bring this 3 and uh, eta to this side of the equation. So finally, it will be V of t. 2, this 3 comes down 9. So 2 by 9, r square g, rho minus sigma divided by eta. This is the final expression for terminal velocity of the solid sphere which is moving through a fluid medium. You can see from this expression that the terminal velocity to three quick points we can note. Quick points that is uh, this terminal velocity is proportional to square of the radius of the ball. If you double the radius, the terminal velocity will become four times. Okay. And directly proportional to sigma, inversely proportional to eta, and directly proportional to the difference of densities of the two medium. One is the object, another is the fluid medium in which it is moving. Okay, thank you.